Have you ever wondered how Somalia, a country rich with history and culture, came to face such devastating famine? Let's take a journey back in time to the early days of Somalia, a land that has always been a melting pot of cultures. Nestled in the Horn of Africa, Somalia's strategic location made it a crossroads for trade and civilizations. From the ancient Egyptians who traded frankincense and myrrh to the Persians and Romans who came for spices and exotic goods, Somalia has been a vibrant hub of commerce and culture for millennia. In the Middle Ages, powerful city-states like Mogadishu, Barawa and Hafun flourished on the Somali coast, their influence extending far across the Indian Ocean. These city-states were renowned for their impressive architecture, intricate social structures and advanced legal systems. They were testament to the resilience and ingenuity of the Somali people. But as history marched on, Somalia found itself under the yoke of colonial rule. The late 19th century saw Britain, Italy and France carve up the land for their own interests. Yet the spirit of the Somali people was indomitable. Their fight for freedom culminated in independence in the mid-20th century, uniting the territories under one flag, one nation. However, the joy of independence was short-lived. In the late 20th century, a brutal civil war erupted, destabilizing the region and plunging it into chaos. The central government collapsed and the country was divided among armed factions, each vying for power. The economy crumbled and social services disappeared. Amid this turmoil, the Somali people bore the brunt of the conflict. Civil unrest, political instability and economic collapse created a perfect storm. The once flourishing land was now vulnerable to a threat far more insidious than war. Famine, a land known for its resilience, was now on its knees. The civil unrest that began in the late 20th century set the stage for a complex and challenging situation, a perfect storm for famine. The political instability in Somalia plays a significant role in the ongoing famine crisis. For over three decades, Somalia has been embroiled in a devastating civil war that has shattered the country's infrastructure and government. The result? A power vacuum that has given rise to militant groups such as Al-Shabaab. The presence of these groups has made it increasingly difficult for aid to reach those most in need, significantly exacerbating the food crisis. The civil war, which erupted in 1991, led to the collapse of the central government. The absence of a functioning government meant that basic services such as healthcare, education and crucially food security were left in disarray. The lack of a central power to manage resource allocation and infrastructure development has made it challenging to respond effectively to the famine. Moreover, the rise of militant groups, particularly Al-Shabaab, has added another layer of complexity to the crisis. These groups often control large areas of the country, including areas most severely affected by famine. Their control over these regions makes it extremely difficult for international aid organizations to deliver much needed food and medical supplies. In some instances, these groups have even been known to block aid entirely. This combination of political instability and militant control contributes to the ongoing difficulty in implementing long-term solutions for food security. The inability to establish effective agricultural policies, build infrastructure, or provide consistent aid has left many Somalis in a state of chronic food insecurity. And while international aid does make it through, it is often only a temporary solution. Without the ability to address the root causes of the famine, the political instability and lack of government control, the cycle of famine continues. In conclusion, the political instability in Somalia has made it a challenging environment for addressing the famine crisis. Until a stable government can be established and the power of militant groups curbed, the famine in Somalia is likely to remain an ongoing and devastating issue. But politics alone don't paint the full picture. The environment has a critical role in Somalia's famine situation. Let's delve into the environmental factors that contribute to drought and famine in Somalia. Climate change, deforestation and overgrazing top the list each playing a significant role in exacerbating food shortages by reducing crop yields and livestock health. Climate change is a global issue, but its impacts are felt acutely in regions like Somalia. The country has always had a dry climate, but the situation is getting worse. 
Extended periods of drought are becoming more frequent and severe due to rising temperatures and changing weather patterns. These droughts devastate crops, leaving farmers with little to harvest and communities with insufficient food supplies. And then there's deforestation. Somalia's forests, once lush and abundant, have been drastically reduced. Without these forests, the land loses its ability to retain water, leading to soil erosion and desertification. This, in turn, reduces the amount of arable land available for farming. Fewer trees also mean less shade and more heat, making it harder for crops to grow and for livestock to find respite from the harsh sun. Overgrazing is another significant issue. Somalia's population relies heavily on livestock for their livelihood. However, overstocking and overgrazing have led to land degradation. When too many animals graze for too long, the vegetation is stripped away, leaving the soil exposed. This bare soil is easily swept away by wind and rain, further contributing to desertification. And let's not forget the impact on livestock. Overgrazing leaves animals with less to eat, affecting their health and productivity. These factors are interconnected, each exacerbating the other. Climate change intensifies drought conditions, making deforestation and overgrazing even more damaging. Deforestation accelerates soil erosion, which is worsened by overgrazing. And overgrazing in turn makes the land more vulnerable to the effects of climate change. The consequences are dire. Reduced crop yields and unhealthy livestock mean less food for Somalia's population. This leads to famine, a tragic situation where people are left with little or nothing to eat. But it's not just about food. These environmental issues also impact water availability. With less rain and fewer trees to retain water, wells run dry. And without water, crops can't grow, livestock can't survive, and people can't live. The environmental challenges Somalia faces are daunting, but understanding them is key to finding solutions. By acknowledging the role of climate change, deforestation and overgrazing in Somalia's famine situation, we can begin to see the bigger picture. And it's only by seeing this bigger picture that we can start to address the root causes and work towards sustainable and lasting solutions. The environmental challenges Somalia faces are daunting, but understanding them is key to finding solutions. Agriculture, the backbone of Somalia's economy, is under siege from both political and environmental factors. In Somalia, farming isn't just a means of livelihood, it's a way of life, a tradition that has been passed down through generations. But today, this tradition is threatened by a multitude of challenges. Let's start with the basics. Somalia's agricultural sector is dominated by two main practices, crop production and livestock farming. The former is primarily found in the southern regions where the fertile soil and the two annual rainy seasons allow for the cultivation of crops like maize, sorghum and sesame. On the other hand, livestock farming is more prevalent in the arid northern regions where pastoral communities rear camels, goats and sheep. However, these traditional practices are being severely tested. Political instability has led to a lack of investment and infrastructure, hampering agricultural development. Farmers often face difficulties in accessing markets, and there's a lack of modern farming equipment and techniques. This, coupled with frequent conflicts, has made farming a high-risk occupation. But it's not just the political landscape that's testing the resilience of Somalia's farmers. The environment, too, has been less than kind. Droughts a result of changing weather patterns, have become more frequent and severe. These dry spells decimate crops, kill livestock and leave the soil barren. The impact on the farming community is devastating. Yet amidst these challenges, there's a glimmer of hope. Sustainable farming practices could potentially turn the tide. Techniques like agroforestry, where trees and crops are grown together, can improve soil fertility, increase crop yields and provide fodder for livestock. Rainwater harvesting could mitigate the effects of drought, and terracing can help control soil erosion. But the path to sustainability is fraught with obstacles. Implementing these practices requires knowledge, resources, and support. Farmers need training in new techniques, access to necessary equipment, and financial backing. In a country where political instability is the norm, garnering this support is no easy task. Despite these hurdles, there are those who continue to strive for change. Local communities, non-governmental organizations, 
and international bodies are working together to promote sustainable farming. They're providing training, distributing seeds and equipment, and helping farmers access markets. Their efforts are a testament to the resilience and determination of the Somali people. But there's a long way to go. The challenges are substantial and the stakes are high. Agriculture is more than just an economic sector in Somalia. It's a lifeline for millions of people, a source of food, income and hope. The future of Somalia's agriculture, and by extension its food security, depends on overcoming these substantial challenges. But with determination, resilience and a collective effort, it's a challenge that can be met. For the sake of Somalia's farmers and for the future of the country, it's a challenge that must be met. Land use in Somalia is a complex issue, intertwined with the country's political and environmental problems. The story of land use in this East African nation isn't just about soil and crops, it's about people, power and survival. For decades, the Somali people have been displaced due to ongoing conflict and severe drought. As families are forced to abandon their homes, their farmland is often left untended and exposed to the elements. This results in land degradation, a process where fertile soil loses its productivity. Imagine the rich, dark soil you'd find in a thriving garden. Now picture it thinning, drying out and blowing away with the wind. That's the reality for many farmers in Somalia, turning once productive fields into barren landscapes. This displacement and degradation of arable land has far-reaching implications. It not only threatens the livelihood of farmers, but also the food security of the entire nation. Without productive land, growing food becomes an uphill battle, and this scarcity fuels the flames of conflict. In Somalia, land isn't merely a resource, it's a symbol of power. Different groups vie for control over fertile areas, often resulting in violent clashes. This struggle for resource control further complicates the land use issue. It becomes a vicious cycle where conflict leads to displacement, which leads to land degradation, which in turn fuels more conflict. In the midst of these challenges, it's important to remember that the land isn't just a battlefield or a victim of degradation. It's also a source of hope. With sustainable land management practices and peaceful resolution of conflicts, Somalia's soil can once again become a foundation for food security and prosperity. To put it simply, resolving land use issues is a crucial step towards achieving food security and ending famine in Somalia. The land, its people and their future are all interconnected, and in that connection lies the potential for change, growth and a better tomorrow for Somalia. So, where does this leave Somalia and what can be done to mitigate the famine situation? To understand the current famine situation in Somalia, we need to look at the interplay of its historical and political context, environmental and agricultural challenges, as well as land use issues. Historically, Somalia has had a turbulent past marked by colonial rule, civil war, and ongoing political instability. This instability has hindered the development of robust institutions and infrastructure making it difficult to effectively respond to crises such as famine. Politically, the lack of a strong central government has meant that the country has had to grapple with issues of governance, corruption and conflict. These factors have further compounded the difficulties in managing and distributing resources and in implementing effective agricultural and environmental policies. The environmental challenges facing Somalia are profound. The country is situated in a region that is prone to drought and the effects of climate change. These factors, coupled with overgrazing and deforestation, have led to severe land degradation, which in turn exacerbates the frequency and intensity of droughts. When rains do come, the barren land is unable to absorb the water, leading to flash floods that further erode the soil. In terms of agriculture, Somalia's farmers face a host of challenges. These include a lack of access to modern farming techniques and equipment, limited availability of quality seeds and fertilizers, and the absence of a reliable market for their produce. This has resulted in low agricultural productivity and increased vulnerability to food insecurity. Land use issues such as land grabbing and displacement have also contributed to the famine situation. These practices have led to the loss of arable land, making it harder for farmers to grow crops and sustain their livelihoods. So what can be done to mitigate the famine situation in Somalia? 
the answer lies in a multi-pronged approach that addresses the root causes of the crisis. Firstly, political stability and strong governance are crucial in ensuring the effective management and distribution of resources. International support can play a key role here, not only in providing immediate humanitarian aid, but also in helping to build strong institutions and infrastructure. Secondly, environmental conservation and sustainable land use practices need to be prioritized. This would involve efforts to combat desertification, promote reforestation, and implement sustainable agricultural practices. Lastly, investment in the agricultural sector is needed to boost productivity and strengthen resilience against food insecurity. This includes providing farmers with access to modern farming techniques and equipment, quality seeds and fertilizers, and a reliable market for their produce. The road to ending famine in Somalia is steep, but with understanding, commitment and action, it is a road that can be traveled.